Hello, my name's Al and today I'm going to show you how to replace your disc brake pads. Replacing your disc brake pads is dead easy and you hardly need any tools to do it at all. First of all, you're going to need some new pads. So these need to fit the brakes that are on your bike. There's two different types. These are organic pads and you can also get sintered pads. Sintered pads generally have some metal in the mix, in the friction material, and that makes them harder wearing. Organic pads generally offer a, a bit of a better bite, uh, initial bite to the brake, uh, and they're often quieter as well. Tools that you're definitely gonna need are a screwdriver, some Allen keys, possibly Torx keys, depends on the brake. You may also like to use some pliers and a disc pad spreader. They're not absolutely essential, but they do come in handy. First of all, we're gonna remove the wheel for the brake that we're gonna work on. So replacing the pads in the rear brake. It's important that we don't touch the, the braking surface. We've got SRAM mech here, so we can lock the cage out of the way and make it easier to get the wheel out. And this is a, a bolt through axle. So that pulls out like so. the wheel out of the way. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to push the pistons of the brake back into their bores inside the caliper. Now these pads in here are our old pads that we're taking out so it doesn't matter too much but if you were going to reuse them then you want to make sure that your screwdriver is incredibly clean because otherwise you're going to contaminate the brake pad and there's no real way of fixing that contamination once it's happened. So you're just gonna pop your screwdriver in between the pads and we're levering them apart. Just pushing the pads back. You don't have to push hard and that will push those pistons back. It will reset them. So they do advance out as you brake and as the, the pad material wears. So that gives you a consistent feel at the lever. Our new brake pads will have more friction material so those pistons will need to be further back to enable us to get the brake rotor into the caliper. So with those pushed all the way back, we can remove the retaining pin and the retaining clip. You might need your pliers for this if it's a bit tight. Just remove that from the pin. And on the other end of the pin, It'll have an Allen head or a Torx key head uh, for you to undo. So remove that pin and then we'll be able to remove our pads. So they should come out as a pair. So they do have a, a left and a right pad on some brakes. So make sure you uh, take note of the orientation. I find it always pays to use the official pad. So. We've got SRAM pads here going into the SRAM brake. Generally gives the, the best fit and the best results. These come with the pad spring and also a new pin and a new clip, which you might not get with, with other brake pads. So we're gonna make a little sandwich. So we've got our spring and our two brake pads and the little legs of the spring should fit nicely on either side of the, of the pad like so. This little protrusion here from the backing plate needs to sit to the back of the caliper and they just push straight in, super easy. You'll see that your new pin has got a bit of Loctite on there, that'll help stop it vibrating loose. And we're just nipping that bolt up, doesn't have to be super tight at all. Then we take our pad pin retaining clip and we pop it into place like so. With the new pads in place, we're gonna use our little pad spreader here. Just push that in between the pads and that should space them correctly when we fit our wheel and rotor back into the, into the dropouts. When we removed it, we were in top gear. So that's where the chain's gonna sit and just pop the disc in between the pads and tighten up the axle. As we've reset the pistons in the brake, you may find that the first couple of times you pull the brake lever, it does pull 
further back to the bar than you used to. So give it a good few pulls and that will set the pads in place. Hopefully, if nothing's seized and everything's set up correctly, you won't need to make any adjustments at all. So this caliper was nicely aligned over the rotor. So even with the new pads in, that's still sitting perfectly cent central over the rotor and there's no rubbing from the pads. If there is rubbing, it might be because one of the pistons is sticking and it needs freeing up. Although everything is set up correctly now, you will need to bed in the pads for them to achieve full braking power. This will take 10 to 20 good hard stops. So find yourself a clear bit of road where you're away from traffic and get a reasonable speed up, hit the brakes, you'll feel that power increase as you go. So yeah, somewhere between 10 and 20, you'll feel full power come back to the brakes. And then they'll all be good and ready to go out and hit the road. Thanks for watching. See you next time.